Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Islam is monotheistic. There is only one God. This is known as Tawheed. Christianity is polytheistic because Christians worship three separate gods known as the Trinity. Christians claim that this is false. The Trinity is not three separate gods. The Trinity is three in one. But this does this claim make sense? First of all, there's a logical contradiction in the Trinity. How can the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all be one God, but they also not be identical beings? The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. It's all one God, but the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, and neither of them are the Holy Spirit. This is a logical contradiction. The only way to solve the contradiction is to admit that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three separate gods, not just one God. This is, of course, polytheism. As Muslims, we challenge Sam and Jay to resolve this logical contradiction for the audience. Explain to us how the Father, Son, and Spirit are all one God, but they're not identical with each other, and explain it in a way that the average layperson can understand it. A layperson can understand that God is one. He is one God, and he can have multiple attributes. That's Islamic monotheism. I can explain it in one sentence. Can Sam and Jay explain the Trinity without resorting to a bunch of convoluted gobbledygook? We'll see. What Sam and Jay want to do is to try to claim that Islam's conception of God is actually just as complicated as the Trinity. This is a cheap debate tactic, as we'll see. They can't address the logical problem of the Trinity, so they want to make it seem like we have the same problem in Islam. But we don't. There is nothing analogous to the logical problem of the Trinity in Islam. For example, they might claim that Allah's attributes in Islam are incoherent. No, they're not. We can all understand how a person can have multiple attributes, how God can be all-knowing, all-powerful, merciful, loving, etc. This is not hard to understand. Those attributes of God are not separate people with their own minds. But according to the Bible, Jesus and the Father have separate knowledge. They have separate wills. For example, in Mark 13, 32, in the Bible, we read, But about that day, i.e. the day of judgment, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So the Son doesn't know when the day of judgment is, but the Father does know. So this indicates two separate minds. This is polytheism. There are more examples that we can cite in the rebuttal sections, but keep in mind that in the 7th century, the official position of the church in the Third Council of Constantinople, they held the position that Jesus has two wills. The church defined Jesus as having two energies and two wills, one divine and one human. Two separate wills means two separate minds. This means that Jesus and the Father have two separate minds and are therefore two separate entities. You either explain this by admitting it is polytheism, or you have to give us some convoluted explanation of how two minds or three minds are still one God. There's nothing analogous to this in Islamic theology. Islam says there's one God. He has knowledge. He has will. One will, one knowledge. These things are not divided between multiple persons or energies or anything like that. And all of this Islamic monotheism is clearly expressed in the Quran, by the way. Contrast this with the Bible. Jesus is meant to be God, all-knowing, and the only teacher to the disciples, but the Jesus of the Gospels doesn't describe the doctrines of the Trinity. We have to rely on Paul and the Church Fathers to explain what the Trinity is. That's strange. If God wants us to know Him, believe in Him, lay the foundation for a general understanding of Him, why would He leave that to different authors at different times and different places over several centuries, such that when God is finally described in Scripture, it results in a mystery, and we need all these church councils to figure it out? The way that Christians have come to understand the Trinity is what we'd expect if God did not reveal the doctrines of the Trinity. On the other hand, the God in the Quran revealed four short lines that any human being can read and instantly understand who God is and what his attributes are. This is exactly what we would expect from an all-knowing, wise, just, merciful, and loving God who cares about his creation. The four lines are the 112th chapter of the Quran. Say, he is God, one God, Allah the completely self-sufficient. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Praise be the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one true God, and glory to the Son of God who became flesh for our salvation. May the Lord Jesus be magnified and the falsehood of Tawheed exposed. Now, notice what Daniel did. <clears throat> Instead of focusing on what it means for Allah to be one, he spent the bulk of his time criticizing the Trinity, but we will answer his objections in a rebuttal period, but I'm now going to turn against him because not so fast. <clears throat> when he says he believes in Tawheed, what exactly does it mean for Allah to be one? Because I'm aware that Daniel does believe 
the fact that the Quran is uncreated. And therefore, we now have two distinct eternal entities that are not identical. Why? Because I'm going to show Daniel from his authentic sources, Sahih narrations, that the Quran and the chapters of the Quran actually want to see and debate with Allah. So now we have a paradox. Because if the Quran is the speech of Allah, and that's Allah speaking, is Allah speaking to himself? So is Daniel actually a modalist? Or is he a polytheist? Or does he have a form of a trinity? But his is even worse, because it's not three persons, because each chapter of the Quran <clears throat> has a potentiality of speaking with Allah. So that means his God consists of at least 115 divine persons or divine beings who can interact with one another and appear separately. And this is all from his authentic narrations. Secondly, the second problem he has <clears throat> is that according to the Quran, the spirit of Allah is not Gabriel. So I'm going to now press him in the rebuttal period to prove otherwise. There's not a single verse in the Quran that says the spirit, the Ruh, is Jibreel. <clears throat> He's now dependent on the very scholars of Islam that come centuries later to bail out Allah and his messenger, because that's what he accused the Lord Jesus, that Jesus wasn't clear enough to articulate the Trinity, but he did make an admission, which is now going to come and bite him. He admitted Paul taught the Trinity. It's now recorded. I want everyone to hear it. Paul taught the Trinity, because when we come to the scriptures, I'm going to show that even the Quran acknowledges that Paul was used by Allah to spread the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. More to come. The spirit, according to the Quran, is distinct from Allah. He appears as a man. He speaks and creates. So now if we add the spirit to the Quran and Allah, he's got about 116 divine persons or beings, and he doesn't have a singular person <clears throat> called Allah. Then we can go a little further <clears throat> and address the issue of the fact that according to our friend here, this is his belief, Allah has, <clears throat> well, he wouldn't use the term body parts. I don't want to misrepresent him. Allah has a foot. He has a shin. He even has loins. And he has at least two eyes, if not more, and two right hands. Now, for the life of me, if Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth, how does he exist as an embodied being without him dwelling in space? Because if he's atemporal and he's timeless, that means his God supposedly exists when there was no time, space, and place. But if you have a foot and you have a shin and you have two right hands, I don't know what happened to the left one, but we'll get into that. Two right hands, at least two eyes. In fact, the Arabic says three or more, but we'll get into that. Then that means his God is an embodied, embodied being who is temporal and finite, which means that his God did not create all space or place and time because there's a space that his body parts need to occupy in order for him to be his God. So the problem is actually worse for Daniel than for us. So he's going to have to explain how is it that he's a polytheist, pagan, masquerading as a monotheist, because what he just told you is not anchored in the Quran or the authentic <clears throat> sunnah of Muhammad. So good luck in trying to defend your rational Salafi anthropomorphism. And last time I checked, his partner doesn't share his Salafi anthropomorphism, so we're going to have a field day. Now, how much time do I have? Uh, one minute to go, 110. Hey, you want to take last minute? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, I'd like to point out that uh, in uh, Daniel's opening statement, he also committed a fallacy, which is a form of uh, Occam's razor fallacy. He kept appealing to the fact that because it's simple, then it must be obvious it must be the case. Just because something seems or appears to be simpler or more obvious, or because it was only four short and simple sentences has nothing to do with whether it's true or false. In fact, as we're going to see, the Muslims amongst themselves and their various schools all compete and disagree and fight, not only over the attributes, but also over jurisprudence. Okay, I guess I'll uh, go first here. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Notice that for this debate, Sam Shimon had to create a religion a mockery, something which does not actually exist, in order to argue against the Muslims. No Muslim believes that Allah is 115 persons. Not even the Christians who didn't understand Islam, like John of Damascus, could come up with something so ridiculous. But we will find that this is the case in Christian theology, that God is another being. I mean, I, I do believe that they, uh, I, I do think that they believe in, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Justin Mato, saying that there's another entity. Of course, they would like to revise that, but that's what he literally says. When it comes to the New Testament, Jesus says it's a person cannot 
uh, have two masters, or rather that he cannot serve two lords. We look at the Jesus of the New Testament, he's at odds with the Christian understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity. We can even go a step further than this. For us Muslims, yes, the Quran describes Allah in a simple way, uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas, but from this, we get a comprehensive understanding. We say that this is a Jawami al-Kalam, or speech which is extensive. You can ask us almost any question about the nature of Allah, and in those four short passages, we can understand it. To the point that if I were to compare this with the Bible, I would not be able to find four verses that simply and reasonably explain the nature of God. If God loved us, he cared for us and he was merciful for us, then there's a duty there, a justice, where he would want us to understand him. But our Christian colleagues fundamentally cannot and do not understand God. I'll give one simple example here. The God of the Quran was able to describe himself as one, absolutely one, meaning nothing. The God of the Bible allegedly describes himself as begotten, a word of which the meaning we cannot know and which we know what's actually changed. For those who don't know, the God of the Bible, when he says that he's begotten, this comes from the Greek word monogenes. Unfortunately, that word today is not translated as unique. So if you're a Christian, it doesn't matter to you that the Bible does not teach what you actually believe. My friend here, Sam, actually teaches that if a thing, an idea or belief, cannot stand being tested by the Bible, then it is false. So I would like to ask him, where is the belief that Jesus is begotten using the Greek of the New Testament? Brother Daniel. Yeah, I just want to say that they did exactly what I predicted in the opening statement. They wouldn't address the Trinity at all and the clear logical contradiction of the Trinity that everyone is aware of. They had to bring up these unrelated issues like the uncreatedness of the Quran or that God, Allah has uh, hands, for example. This has nothing to do with monotheism. Maybe they don't understand what Tawheed means. Tawheed means one God. It means monotheism. And this is the claim that we're making, that polytheism is the Trinity. The Trinity is polytheism. So tell me how I want them to explain, since their whole opening statement was bringing up the issue of the uncreatedness of the Quran and the hand of Allah, how does that contradict monotheism? How does God having a hand However, you want to explain that hand. It has nothing to do, by the way, with Salafi or the other theological schools of Kalam and Islam. 30. All of the schools are united on this. All Muslims are united on this. God having a hand does not mean that the hand has its own mind, that the hand is its own entity, its own God, its own person. No theologian has ever said that. There is no uh, challenge to monotheism of Islam by bringing up the hand or the Quran or anything like that shin. or the shin. Yeah. And the, again, like you just said it perfectly, 115 God, like separate gods with minds. The Quran doesn't have its own mind. That is so I did, I did want to address what Daniel said, because of course he misstated several things about what our position is. First of all, the argument about attributes was not that you believe that they're persons. Sam was making an analogy to show that you have the exact same problem in your position. And you have a double standard when you try to say that we have to solve this Trinitarian dilemma. It's a contradiction. But your view of the attributes is not subject to that, pro that problem. That's just a double standard. What's the point? Nobody said that you believe that the attributes are persons. So that's a misdirection. First of all, uh, didn't Hikichu already admit that Paul taught the Trinity? And I think Ijaz disagreed with that. So which one is it? Did Paul teach the Trinity or did he not? And then I would also add that uh, Christ does not have a human person and that's why the, the notion about divine mind is a two mind scenario where he shares a divine mind with the father and he has limitations in his human mind that's why it's two minds so you tried to say that he had one mind and it was separate knowledge the expression where he says that he's limited in knowledge is a reference to rhetoric and if you can read saint basil letter 234 5 and 6 he talks about these issues and explains that just as Jesus says in other places that there's no one good but God. He's not literally saying that there's no one else good, because in other passages he calls himself good. He calls the Holy Spirit good as well, and so it's a feature of rhetoric. You have the same types of expressions in your own uh, Quranic uh, uh, exegesis where you try to solve these dilemmas, but you don't want us to have that right. Sam, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, notice how Daniel conveniently wants to evade what the topic is. The topic is Trinity versus Tawheed, but I know he can't defend Tawheed because it's irrational, so he just wants to attack the Trinity, thinking that Tawheed wins by default. Daniel, 
You're the one who set up the topic, Trinity versus Tawheed. You didn't want to do it separately, so stop whining about it. Now, coming back to the issue, maybe you didn't hear what I said. The Quran must have a mind independent from your God if the Quran is going to argue with your God and the individual, individual chapters. Here, Sahih Muslim, Book 4, number 1757. Abu Mama said he heard all his messengers say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. How does the speech of Allah intercede with Allah if it's a speech of Allah? Is Allah speaking to himself in a different mode? Then you are a modalist. So your tawhid is modalism. But then it gets worse for you. Recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Surah Imran, chapters 2 and 3. For on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds in ranks, pleading for those who recite them. Pleading with who? With themselves? If the surahs of the Quran can appear independently, separately, and appear in visible form, and argue with Allah, that's either your God, being schizophrenic, arguing with himself in different modes, so you're a modalist, or you have now separate gods arguing with one another, so you're a polytheist, or... You have to believe that Tawheed encompasses a plurality of distinct entities who can then interact and argue with one another. So don't run and evade with your smoke and mirror tactics. Deal with the issue. You didn't understand what I meant about your, uh, your God's body parts, even though you don't like to use the term body parts. And no, not all the Sunnis define the hand of Allah as meaning what you mean, because you have those that say that it's a metaphor for his power. You do not believe this. So I'm still trying to figure out, do you believe in a finite God who assumes time and space? Because if he has a hand, two right hands, what happened to his left? Maybe you can explain. He has a shin. He has loins. That means he's an embodied being. If he's an embodied being, he requires Sorry. space. Unless you want to con create another contradiction with your rational Salafi anthropomorphism. Still 20 on the clock. Okay. Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't know because I'm trying to speak fast, make the time. So yeah, Daniel, remember what the topic is. I know maybe sometimes being a little intimidated, you forget. Trinity versus Tawheed. Ten seconds. Don't run from shouldering the burden of proof. Of proof. Go ahead, yeah, I'll take this. Yep. So this is quite simple. Um, how is it possible that they don't understand that the Quran also uses rhetoric? In fact, in the Quran, Allah says he uses examples of every kind. So it's not that hard to understand it. But there is a problem here for Jay, because Jay seems to think that in Mark 13, 32, this is simple rhetoric. Unfortunately, the scribes of the Bible did not see it that way, which is why they had to repeatedly change this verse over several centuries. They clearly saw a problem with it. If there was no problem, why did the scribes change it? Unfortunately, Jay, the scribes factually disagree with you. I'm sorry, but someone later like St. Basil trying to allegorize it is not going to solve the physical problem of your scribes changing the Bible. Secondly, uh, uh, Sam seems to not understand basic Islam. He begins by asking, what is Tawheed? Good question. Let me teach you. Allah is absolutely one. Allah has distinct attributes, and Allah uh, does not need anything. He's not multiple persons. He doesn't rely on anyone or anything other than himself. He is beginningless and, and endless, meaning he's the first and the last. If I were to ask the God of the Bible, is he the first and the last? We know that very recently, um, the scholars at the ECM have decided that God the Father in Revelation 21.6 actually became the first and the last. That's a problem for the Trinity. Do you believe that God had to become the first and the last? Who made him the first and the last? For us, that just seems unreasonable nonsense. Daniel? Yeah, so Sam wants to make a big deal about the Quran uh, speaking. Um, so he read that hadith. Um, Sam is not familiar with the Quran. So in chapter 36, verse 65, we read in the Quran, on that day, we shall seal up their mouths, but their hands will speak to us and their feet bear witness to everything they have done. Does that mean that our hands and feet have minds? Did any Muslim in history ever interpret that verse that the hands and feet of our own bodies have minds, yet they will speak for or against us on the day of judgment? So this is um, an interpretation that he has that no one has ever made in the history of Islam. But many Christians and theologians and church fathers have debated and discussed the knowledge of, the, of Jesus being different from the knowledge of the Father and the will of Jesus being different from the uh, will of the Father. Jesus has a separate human will, and this is what they will not explain. Um, also, so... Yeah, explain 
that problem, that contradiction, God having a hand, guess what? That's a problem for uh, the Trinity as well, because the New Testament in Acts 7.55 describes Jesus as standing at the right hand of the Father. So what is the right hand of the Father? Is that in space? Does the Father have a body? Can you explain that? What is the hand, the right hand of the Father? Does he have a left hand? Does the Father have a body? Like, does the Father have two sides? Explain that verse within Acts, and uh, that's in the New Testament. So I'm very interested to understand if this is a corporeal, physical Father or not, or what does the Bible mean? Do we have an explanation of that? So this, it doesn't matter if you take the hand of God to be metaphorical, 30. if you take it to be bila kaif, meaning without modality, that doesn't contradict Tohate. It doesn't contradict monotheism. Explain how having a hand, God having a hand, means that it's not monotheism. That's what you can't do. Hey, right. you want to go? You want me to go? Go ahead. Wait, do I, is my hard time up? Yeah, you still had 10 seconds, but it's oh. dwindling down now. Um, Okay. Yeah. Hey, do you want? I, I, you want me to? Let me ask Jay though, because we don't know. You want okay. me to split the time with you? You want me to take the four minutes? Uh, I've got. About, I need about one or two minutes. You can go ahead. Hey, why don't you go with your one two minutes? Before, so before you guys go, Dan, did you get oh. everything out that you needed to get there? Because I think it, there might have been a confusion on the time. Yeah, I got everything out. Thanks. Okay. All right. Cool. Just want to make sure it's all good. All right, uh, Jay, you're going to kick it off on this one. Right. So, uh, okay. going back to the text go about. Uh, go. Are right, ready? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. We'll... Going back to the text about uh, the limitation of Jesus' knowledge, he said the scribes changed it. If the scribes changed it, why is it still in the text talking about the exaggeration of the limitation of his knowledge? When I said exaggeration or rhetoric, I didn't say allegory, so I don't think Ijaz knows the difference between uh, the grammatical terms of exaggeration and allegory. I did not say it's an allegory. It's similar to other passages where Jesus talks about straining a gnat, swallowing camels. This is called, it's called exaggeration. And so in the same way, he can say, no one is good but God. Okay, nobody believes that that literally means that there's literally no one good. Like the prophets weren't good. Jesus isn't good. The spirit isn't good. No, he's talking about no one is good but God the Father in a specific sense of God being, the Father being the arche, the principle, the fount, and the cause. The last thing I'll say is that we're not subject to the same problems as you guys well, particularly Daniel, because we don't have the anthropomorphic error about God the Father. So what we believe about the mode of the sun coming into time and space, you have that same issue with Allah himself. You're saying that Allah has these parts, which you say are attributes. And by the way, don't you two disagree on the status of those attributes between yourselves? Yep. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, let me <clears throat> piggyback off of what he just said. Now, <clears throat> he was talking about that the Quran talks about Hands and feet speaking, they don't have minds. How do you know that? Where did the text tell you that? Notice his appeal to authority. He says, well, no Muslim scholar. Yes, I know you live in denial, just like you live in denial that you're pagans and polytheists for a variety of issues, especially kissing the black stone. It doesn't matter what your scholars say. It's what you can prove. So prove to me that when hands and feet are speak, they're mindless. So now let's take your analogy with the Quran. So a mindless Quran will be engaging Allah. So you're going to have the Quran engaging with Allah even though it doesn't have a mind of its own. So now we're back to square one. If the Quran is the speech of Allah, how does Allah's speech speak to himself? Is Allah speaking to himself, but in a different mode? You didn't answer that dilemma. Now, coming back to the issue of God in the right hand. Unlike you, <clears throat> according to the scriptures, unlike your position as a Salafi anthropomorphist, the Bible says God is spirit. So I'm going to challenge you to show me in your Quran and Sunnah where it says your Allah is spirit. And in the context of John 4, 24, God is spirit, meaning that he is bodiless, incorporeal, because he's the creator of heavens and earth. But that God can appear visibly. God the Father appears visibly in heaven. That's Daniel 7, 9, verses 10. Chapter 7, verses 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 4. So when it says that Jesus in his glorified physical body enters this heavenly realm where angels dwell, Heaven itself is created, and God can manifest in heaven, and Jesus physically being seen by the inhabitants of heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father who appears visibly. But you don't believe that about the body parts of your God. You're not like Ijaz and Maturidi. You believe your God has two right hands. Where's the left one? I'm still waiting for the answer. He has loins. He has a shin, and he's going to put his foot over hell. And then you have the womb yanking on his loins. That's inside Bukhari. How many seconds do I have? You got 50 seconds. You're good. Keep going. 50? 50 right. seconds. Yep. So 
Now, come back and address your polytheistic pagan beliefs. Since the chapters of the Quran can appear separately in visible form, and they are interceding with Allah, they're disputing with Allah. How if the Quran 30. is the speech of Allah? Time up? No, no, 30, 30. I'm just saying okay. 30. How is, the, how is the Quran, how are the individual surahs of the Quran disputing with Allah? According to you, no one thinks they have a mind. So mindless surahs have the mind enough to know who recites them, who to defend and argue Ten. on behalf of, and argue with Allah when this is supposedly speech of Allah. So is your Allah speaking to himself? Schizophrenic deity? Anyway, I think my time is up. Go ahead. Uh, Jazz, do you want to go? Yeah, uh, this is quite easy. So none of these points are defeaters for Islam, nor do they change or attack what Muslims actually believe. Notice the straw men that they have to create. They have to think that these are parts of Allah. Even some admitted, you don't use this language. So if we don't use that language, we don't describe it that way, we don't teach it that way, why is your opinion of how you read it in a very Christian way, I would say? It's very natural for you to create different persons for God. That's the very definition of schizophrenia. Let's get something straight here. Jay is incorrect. He made the statement, well, if it's still there in the Bible from Mark 13, 32, that Jesus does not know the day or the hour, uh, how does that mean that the scribes changed it? Yes, the scribes actually changed the meaning of the term, and what uh, the academics have gone and done is translate, and they've tried to fix and adjust what the verse means, because it occurs twice in the Bible. And in the two places where Jesus has no knowledge of the day or the hour, the scribes try to amend it. There is no textual critic alive today who will not testify to that. So I put it back to Jay. Let's look at the manuscripts. Sam says that your manuscripts are from the 4th century, and verbatim he says that there is a problem because the, uh, the further they go back, the more that they disagree. And this refers to... Codex Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Alexandrinus, Ephraim Rescriptus, etc. He says that it's a problem. So, Jay, please address the problem. Please answer how God can be ignorant. Please answer how God can not know things. That is a God who is fundamentally a jahil. Lastly, on this point of Allah having parts, Muslims do not believe that. Muslims do not say as well that when the Day of Judgment comes and things testify, parts testify, that these mean that they are the mind of Allah. No one says that. Daniel? Yeah, so there's a lot to say here. They keep saying that I'm Salafi this and Salafi that. Me and Ijaz are on the same page on all of these issues. You don't have to be a particular school of Islamic thought to defend Tawheed. So you keep projecting this onto us because you have no way to respond to our argument. Um, and it's interesting that you're bringing up sects because Jay here has claimed that Catholics are modalists, that they're heretics, and that basically they are deviant. So what does Jay have to say about Catholics? He thinks that you're a deviant and a heretic, Sam, and maybe that you're going to hell. So did you clarify that with uh, Jay before you even agreed to this debate? Second of all, for Sam, look at what Luke 1940 says. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Stones will cry out according to the New Testament. Do the stones have minds? Isaiah 55, 12, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Is that, does that mean that the hills and the trees have minds? Sam, explain that. Or how about Sa Psalm 98, 8, let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Does that mean that the rivers have hands and they're clapping for joy? Do they have minds? Sam, please explain all of those verses. You want to have that kind of understanding of mountains, rivers, and whatever, and you say that, you'll say that these are not minds. But the problem with the Trinity is that Jesus has a separate mind than the Father. The Father has a separate mind from Jesus. They both have a separate mind from the Holy Spirit. That means they're three separate entities and therefore three separate gods. This is polytheism. We don't have that problem in Islam. The Quran doesn't have its own mind. There's no one who ever has thought the Quran has its own mind that is separate from God. But this is what you're trying to claim, not based on any text, not based on any hadith. This is just your uh, assertion based on nothing. So address the Trinity. Why can't you address the Trinity? You have to raise these straw men against Islam. It sounds kind of ridiculous, frankly. Jay, do you want me to take it? Uh, you guys uh, still me, got one. Me. Muslims, you guys go. are done. You only got 142 left. You still got 142. That that that, that concludes. Yeah. I want to emphasize that 
They did not address the Trin Trinity at, at all. We okay. addressed all of their complaints against the Quran, against monotheism, against Tawhid. They haven't even started to defend the Trinity. So this is a fail, a so big fail. Do, and Sam is I, proof for Christians. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, could I point out as well, they didn't address the problem of Jesus' status as being begotten, being changed in the actual text. Okay, you seem so, to be missing the point that Sam admitted was a problem. Sam says that the manuscripts from the fourth century are a problem. He says Codex Sinaiticus. Well, how about this? How about this? Real quick, cause, because cause, it's filled with errors and heresies. Real quick. Why does he defend that? Roger, you want to go first, sir? Yeah, so again, <clears throat> Jesus doesn't have a separate divine mind. He shares the same divine mind as the Father. And when he assumed human nature, he assumed a human mind. That's part of the fullness of human nature. So we don't say that he's separate, just like the persons of the Trinity are distinct, but not separate. Just like you believe attributes are distinct, not separate. Now, I know that you can't seem to follow the fact that we're not saying you believe the attributes actually have minds. We're just pointing out that you have the same metaphysical problem, that you have a double standard for saying, I'm not liable to explain that, you have to explain it. And then when we bring that up, every one of your responses on that is a two quote way. Well, doesn't the Bible talk about body parts? Doesn't the Bible? Yeah, but we don't have the same metaphysical problems as you because we don't have the same metaphysics. So, but you don't, you don't seem to be able to follow that. So that's a two quote way. But uh, other than that, the other thing I would just reply to is that Ijaz kept saying that all of the scholars in the world believe this. There's not a single one that would disagree. Has he read all of the scholars? He asserted all of these things. He says the scribes changed it, yet it's still there in the text. So he's just asserting these things. We don't know who, where he's, where this is coming from. These are all assertions. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, we will get into scripture authenticity in the second part, but he wants to change the topic because it's too hot for him. And in the second part, he just proved Muhammad is a false prophet, and he is, but for other reasons. But let me come and address, guys, you see how desperate Daniel is? And he's talking about, <clears throat> we're evading the topic. Read Luke 19, 38 to 40. Let me show you the context as my time is fleeting. There, Jesus is being praised by children. And the scholars are saying, rebuke them. He goes, well, if they were silent, even the stones will cry out. Anyone with any common sense, but I understand it's hard for them to read a text in its literary context. He's using hyperbole that even if they don't praise me, creation will praise me. That's exactly the context of the Psalms. The psalmist, which is poetic literature, is personifying creation to show that all creation glorifies God because creation is a testimony to the greatness and existence of God. Nice try with that false analogy, but I want him now, when I engage you, I'm going to ask you, so are you saying to me that when the Hadith, not your Quran, says that the surahs will intercede with Allah, that's not literal? Are you saying to me when the Quran will intercede with Allah, that's not literal? I hope you say that. And on top of that, what do you do with the Hadith where it says, the trees greeted your prophet, Stones greeted your prophet, and at the last day, a stone will cry out saying, hey, there's a Yahud behind me, come and kill him. Are you going to allegorize those statements, Daniel Hakikachu? I hope not, because I'm going to have a field day at your expense. And what are you going to do with chapter 47, verse 22 of the Quran? When you go to Bukhari, your prophet says there's a primordial rachim, womb, that yanked on your God's gonads. And he said, stop, stop. Are you going to allegorize that too? The fact that your God has loins? The fact that there is a womb yanking on his gonads, which is actually in Bukhari, cited even in Imakathir? You're comparing apples and pineapples because the debate is over. You can't defend your irrational, incoherent Salafi babble. And yes, I know you don't want to say the hand is literal in the sense that it's a hand like my hand. But I want to hear you from your own mouth, Daniel. Are you telling me that Allah's hand is a metaphor for power? I want to hear it. Are you going to say, Billah cave? It's a hand. We know it's a hand. It's unlike anything. We don't know how, but it's a hand. Because your God is not the true God. Your God is the figment of Muhammad's imagination. How much time I have? 15, uh, 13 seconds. Right, so now an interaction. Get ready, boys. I know you want to change the subject. We're going to see how you're going to address these issues. So let's go. Yeah, Daniel, I want to hear from your own mouth the Yad of Allah. Is it a metaphor for his power? 
It can be a metaphor for his power. It can be uh, interpreted in many different ways. It does not contradict. It does not contradict Tawhid. It does not contradict monotheism. Yes, it does. You can have an Ashari position and interpret it as a metaphor, or you can have a Salafi Athari position and interpret it differently. Position? That explain to me how it contradicts. Okay. Well, can you so he, Can you can, can you explain question? to me? I yes, answered I your question. No, you how didn't. does how does a hand? How does God having a hand? However, it's interpreted. Okay. Contradict monotheism. Let me get can, the, can you explain yes, that? Can, how how does how does having a hand how does a hand contradict get, to me, my monotheism? Let me get to the point. Explain it. I, no, you I, asked I, me a question. It's open dialogue. You okay, asked me a question no. and I so, answered you. you now answer my question. Are you? I answered your question. I answered your question. Now you answer my question. What's your position? What? What yeah, do you I've studied Salafi, Athari Islam, no, I've studied you? Ashari no, no, Islam. You, you've studied it, but you won't say your position. Yeah. What are you? What I have you studied believe? all of them. It's irrelevant oh, well, to this great, debate. That, Stick to the topic. Stick to the topic. Stick to the topic. Stick to the topic. What? Explain to me. So, moderator, moderator, he doesn't let me answer the question. He doesn't let me answer the question. No, because you're not, you're, you're doing a dodgeball. Let me answer. Don't have to like yeah. me. This is not, this is not, you don't have to like my answer. This is not interrogation. This is not cross-examination. You already asked me one question. Let me ask you a question now. Okay. Jay, is Catholicism modalism? Is it a heresy? Yes or no? It can lead to that if they're consistent with it. Yes. No, no. Is it, is it or not? Well, it's a false either or because not everybody who's wrong is necessarily a heretic. They're not necessarily formal heretics. You can have a material heresy. So the Catholic position, okay, now, is it a heresy or not? It depends on the person, whether they're hardened in that heresy. No, no, it doesn't depend on a person. There's I mean, a you're, asking, doctrine. you're asking me There's my Catholic position. Doctrine. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, telling, Catholic doctrine, is it I'm telling you my position. Yeah, you're not going to tell like me what answer. my position is. Okay, let me help you. The Catholic like doctrine answer, is mostly so Don't let him filibuster because he wants to eat up the time. Now, let me ask you the question. Because I know that's what we're trying to do. Well, what do you think about that? Jay just called your church a heretic. I'm a heretic. I deserve help. Jay, pray for me and ask the intercession of the saints. Now, let's come back to the Quran. So it's you're ironic that you were trying to pit me okay. against the question. Jazz. I'm being scared. When you and him disbelieve in the same the thing. You don't you're believe Quran. in the same God. You and Jay don't believe in the same God. That's the, what yeah, the point that we're trying to make. Well, I mean, moderator, you're going to have to do a better job. Yeah, the difference between a material and a dialogue, dialogue. And um, I'm trying to have it, you know, how about this? Can you let Sam ask this question, Dan, yes. please? Go ahead. I know okay. you're scared, Daniel. Take it easy. All right. Now, your Quran, your, can you let me make my comment, dude? Well, make a reasonable your comment Quran. rather than insult. Wait a minute. Your Quran. You'll never get to me. Right? Here we go again. All right. I'm going to add 30 Quran seconds to the created, clock. right, Daniel? Yes. Okay, so the hadith that I cited, when it says Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Ran, will appear as flocks of birds interceding for those that <clears throat> recited them. Do you take that metaphorically or do you take it actually? This is a personification of the Quran, just like the Bible verses that I mentioned about rivers clapping their hands, uh, their stones Where does it speaking. Say that? In the Psalms, I'll read them again. In no, Luke, not the Psalm. Hadith. Yeah, so you're making the claim that if the Quran is personified, that means it has a separate mind. So and I put the point to you. And I see now you're interrupting. No, because so, I want to. Can I answer? Yourself. Can I answer the question? Good. Good. So I pointed out that just because there's personification, that doesn't imply that there's a separate mind. And I cited verses of the oh, Bible. Your you response. Know. Your response was that, no, this is just personification in the Bible. So personification is okay in the Bible. That doesn't imply that Papa the Bible, Jackie's that stones have minds and that rivers have minds. That's, personif that's fine. Okay, but if the Quran does it, your, or if uh, Hadith comment. do it, see, you know, it's your, my position, your position is he that asked you, a question, them you, you, you asked the question. You asked the question. Address your position, or are you going to rant and rave because you want to eat up time? So you you interrupt me when I'm answering you. You No, you asked the question. Shouldn't we be able to ask no? You just asked a question. Can I answer. finish my response? You should be able comment. to answer. You can do? So, uh, no, so now, it's, Daniel, not, it's all the turn to ask the question. Daniel, I'm going to ask you a question. No, I'm asking you a question, Sam. Well, hold on. Let's let Sam finish real fast. Let's let Sam finish the question. Let's let Sam finish. And then I'll never get to me. You're going to keep running. Your moderation's got to be able to ask questions or not. Add 30 seconds. Sam asked the last question. Go ahead. Okay. Let's add 30 seconds to the clock. We're going to let Sam finish his point. And then we'll go yep. ahead and let you ask your question. Is she making points or asking um, questions? Okay, so now Daniel, Daniel, let him make his. his... Stop attacking straw man, because in the psalm you will not find where it says, "And the moon will come and intercede for those that look to it, and venerated it." 
The hadiths I cited is about the day of resurrection. It's about intercession. So I want to know, what do you mean by personification when in those hadiths, it's talking about the surahs interceding with Allah. Will there be intercession? Is that true? <clears throat> Will people need intercession before Allah? Is that true? So what exactly do you mean by personification? Because your appeal to the Psalms shows that you don't understand what a personification is. Can I answer without interruption? Go ahead, answer, answer. We'll see how good you Without do. interruption. Yeah, go Can ahead. I answer? Yeah. yeah, and I'll give you okay. Jazz some time as well, because you didn't get a chance. So go ahead. Yeah, sound didn't come to me. As a... Yeah, he, they're just dictating the question. So oh, go ahead, go ahead. I cited verse of the Quran in chapter 36 that even your hands, even your feet will intercede. There are many things that will intercede on the day of judgment. That doesn't mean that those things have minds. Those things don't those things don't imply that those things are God, that those are God's mind. That's the thing. The point that we made against the Trinity is that Jesus has a separate mind, a human mind, and the Father has a separate mind. Now, Jay says that the uh, mind of Jesus is a fully human mind, but does that mean the Father has a fully human mind as well? If not, those are two separate minds of God. So those are two separate minds, two separate entities, two separate beings. That's not analogous to your hands interceding on your behalf on the Day of Judgment or the Quran or your feet or anything else that will intercede on your behalf on the Day of Judgment. Explain how Jesus can have a separate mind from the Father and they be the same mind. So I didn't interrupt. So who you want to answer, Jay? Because he just wants to ask a question. So the separation comes yeah. in the fact that he has a human mind that he assumed, but he he retains the divine mind that he shares with the Father because he's a divine person. He's not a human person. This is an important distinction in Christian theology that we don't accept the Nestorian teaching that Jesus is a human person. He's a, a divine subject that assumed a human mind, a human nature, a human will, a human energy. So he shared it's a both and and not an either or. So your whole question is, predicated on a false either or all right so, so that's do you deny right that the father has so, a human mind so, so real quick jesus has a time, mind that guys, the father doesn't have that is time but uh did you guys want to ask you a question or did he just have a question for you guys they they would, ask you they would not. one answer go ahead just what's your question yeah, uh, simple question okay. why did the scribes omit uh uh for the in the vulgate that jesus does know the day or the hour when it addresses him as the son speaking of the person not speaking of natures yeah, ask me that in the scriptural debates because I'm going to use that well, argument. Actually, this is theological. This is theological. No, it's we not have another topic. Topic. I'm asking you theologically: Is the son the person? Who's oh, well, the can you, you want to talk about the, the, the very thing you accuse me of? Can you answer the question? Or not? Okay. Can you answer it? Okay. Go ahead. Talk over me again. One more time. I Go asked ahead. the question. It's quite simple. You in know, you asked about scribes. Why it says the son? Listen I, to my question. Right, Ijaz, let him. I, I think you heard your question. question. Ijaz, yeah, just let him answer. I know I think it, I, you I think don't it. have to change my question for me. Let you me just ask my question about and answer it. Changing. Listen to what I said. Okay, I right. asked. Okay, Ijaz, Ijaz, he heard. Ijaz, Ijaz, he heard your question. Just let him answer. He heard your question. You said about scribes changing the text, so that is referring to the veracity of the scriptures. But even if we go with your very imbalanced <clears throat> approach to textual criticism, they must have done a very poor job because they left intact the Father alone. So even your argument buries you because whatever the scribes did, if they inserted the word son or omitted it, because there's a debate among textual critics, that passage still has the Father alone. So they must have done a very poor job because they didn't remove the word alone and they left Mark 13, 32 intact because I know what you're referring to, Matthew 24, 36. So that wasn't my question. Okay, can you ask me about textual criticism? That was it, my question the, was not about textual right. criticism. Yes, I yes, asked you, does <laughs> you this son, listen one more listen time, one. listen one more time. I'm asking you, the scribes made the change to omit or the son and I'm asking you, why is it specific for the Son to be omitted if the Son is the same person who has the same knowledge as the Father? Just a simple question. If now, the, the Son way, Daniel, has I the wanna... same knowledge as the Father, why does it specify the way, his ignorance of it? Thank you. Can't you... answer the question. They can't answer it. Well, actually, I did. Move on. 
Okay, no, 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 you didn't no, 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 understand no, the question. You think it's a textual criticism question? You don't answer. Give a chance. Let give Sam or Jay a chance to answer this. Then we're going to move on to scripture because we have went on a little bit longer here. Could I make a final point to Daniel? One final point. Yeah, go ahead. If you can answer their question as well, please. All throughout this debate, he shows that he's a very poor debater because he's attacking straw man. Unlike the examples of your hands and feet, the sirs are supposed to be uncreated and eternal. So you still live with the dilemma that the chapters of the Quran, uncreated, eternal will be speaking with God, so you have uncreated entities unlike your hands and feet, so I'm going to now agree with you. Your Quran is a mindless entity who will appear to Allah without a mind, arguing with Allah, so you're left with a mindless entity interacting with your God, so either that means your God is speaking through different modes, or you have a set of 114 uncreated eternal divine objects who are mindless, and you have the audacity to attack the Trinity. So no, this is all right. So your can I answer? Can I answer is okay. Point? Um, what we'll do, guys, uh, next time is I'm going to have a question answer for each person when we do this open dialogue because I can see that this can easily spiral and we'll fix that on the next one. Um, let's just move to to scripture because we're getting there anyway.